like and subscribe, and you'll have amazing luck for the rest of the week. Women are known as the weaker sex, but they've killed thousands of people over the ages. In the perfect situation, a woman can be as dangerous as a serial killer, as tough as an MMA fighter, and as smart as anyone. A woman can be just as, if not more dangerous than your average man. Let's take a look at the 15 most dangerous women in the world. Let's do this. Elizabeth Bathory This woman is truly a piece of work. What she did to young women will make you throw up in your mouth. Don't say I didn't warn you. Elizabeth Bathory was a Hungarian countess and a niece of the King of Poland, who was renowned for her extreme love of beauty. It's a little extreme, but she thought the key to her eternal youth was bathing in virgin's blood. She went on a murderous rampage, luring young girls to her castle with the promise of employment before robbing them dry. She reportedly even ate some of her victims, proving that her cruelty knew no bounds. Despite her wealth and power, her heinous deeds couldn't be overlooked, and she was ultimately apprehended and given a life sentence in her room. But the servants who assisted her were sentenced to death. Go figure. Freedia Gibbs In the world of boxing, Freedia Gibbs was a force to be reckoned with. Thanks to being bullied at school, she used her hurt feelings and anger at being bullied to become a boxer and kickboxer. With her lightning-fast jabs and potent hooks, this fierce woman dominated the middleweight and super middleweight classes in 1980s and 1990s. Gibbs had two children and was a police officer in addition to her boxing career. She once claimed that boxing was simpler than being a police officer, which is noteworthy given that she once battled for 24 rounds against a formidable opponent. At one point, Gibbs was actually called the most dangerous woman in the world. Gibbs' boxing career came to an end in 1998 with a record of 20 victories, 8 defeats, and 2 draws. Gibbs will always be regarded as a woman who could pack a punch. Are you willing to stand and allow her to give you an uppercut? La Katrina Maria Guadalupe Lopez Esquivel, also known as La Katrina, was an infamous 21-year-old Mexican cartel leader with a taste for violence and a passion for fashion. As the head of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel CNNG, a gang that engages in drug trafficking, kidnappings, and other heinous crimes, she ascended to power. La Katrina became a legend in the world of crime thanks to her extravagant persona, complete with skull makeup and flashy clothes. However, she was fatally shot by police in a shootout in 2020, putting an abrupt end to her reign of terror. Despite the bloodshed and destruction her cartel inflicted, while La Katrina was in charge, her passing was met with tributes and fan art demonstrating her long-lasting influence on Mexican society. Even after her death, her distinctive style and dramatic flair left a lasting impression on the world, despite the fact that her criminal activities can't be glorified. She was definitely extremely dangerous. Lady Death When Germany invaded Russia during World War II, Lyudmila Pavlichenko made the decision to enlist. She was initially rejected because of her attractive appearance and diminutive size. But the officer in charge transferred her to the 25th Rifle Division after she made their mouths hang open with her marksmanship. She had 200 confirmed kills in her first three months of operation in Odessa. Unlike her fellow snipers, Vasily Zatiev and Nikolai Yuchin, who served in Stalingrad, she was never observed. German intelligence discovered her identity and even broadcast radio advertisements, luring her to defect in exchange for cash, status, and special treatment. She was hit by shrapnel four times and once by a machine gun bullet, but she remained unfazed. Stalin personally ordered her to be evacuated by submarine following her final combat victory to keep her out of German hands. She had a total of 309 kills when she was wounded, but the unofficial tally is as high as 400. Jägertruppen operatives These women are part of the only purely female special forces in the world. The Norwegian Jägertruppen, or Hunter Troop, is an urban reconnaissance unit. They train to be able to fight, but are expected to execute undercover missions. About half of their time is spent training alongside male paratroopers, which creates strong rivalry and a sense of purpose. These troops are expected to carry their own weight and equipment and are trained in marksmanship, fieldcraft, self-defense, parachuting, and even scuba diving. Their pass rate is low in terms of recruits that make it to become actual members of the elite unit. 
Only the toughest women eventually obtain their wings and uniparay. Their final training mission includes parachuting into frozen tundra, trekking across many miles of snow and ice, planting explosives on a moored ship without being detected, and then to detonate the explosives and to escape. These are truly among the most dangerous women in the world. Melissa Calderon In 2005, Melissa Calderon formally started her criminal career, initially joining the Sinaloa cartel. She rose to become the head of the Sinaloa cartel's offshoot, the Damasco cartel. Unfortunately, the head of the cartel, El Grande, killed her first boyfriend and had her demoted. Calderon took control of Las Forenza in what might be considered a retaliatory attack, and she and her new boyfriend, Hector Gomez El Chino, whom she elevated to second in command, engaged in an internal conflict against El Grande. She was accused of carrying out over 150 murders in Mexico over a 10-year period, including numerous violent assaults in the tourist destination of Baja, California. In 2005, as Calderon was about to board a flight, the police detained her. She was found guilty and given a prison term. She's currently incarcerated in a maximum security facility and anticipates staying there for the rest of her life. Godmother of Cocaine Grizzle de Blanco, also known as the grandmother of cocaine, was born in 1943 and grew up in squalor. She was involved in kidnapping when she was 11 years old, and she's accused of shooting the victim after his wealthy family refused to pay the ransom. Years later, she fled home and started robbing people in Medici, after which she immigrated to the U.S. using a fictitious name. By displacing or executing her rivals, she became known as the godmother of cocaine. Therefore, it's not surprising that by the beginning of the 1980s, Blanco had established herself as a major figure in the Miami Drug Wars, also known as the Cocaine Cowboy Wars. She rose to become one of the deadliest women, and her reputation made many people shudder. The law did catch up with her, however, and she was arrested in her home by the DEA in 1985. Eileen Warnos Warnos, a murderous prostitute, was born in Leo Pittman, a sociopathic child killer who spent time in several mental institutions before dying in prison. She developed a bad attitude and had to live on the streets and in motels. She kept killing the men who picked her up, saying she was acting in self-defense each time. She would allegedly assert that the man attempted to sexually harass her. Between 1989 and 1990, she killed at least seven middle-aged men in Central Florida. Before shooting her victims to death, she would rob them. Taria Moore and Warnos began a romantic relationship in 1986. When Warnos was eventually detained at the beginning of 1991, she confessed to killing her victims. A year later, she acknowledged that she had killed her victims for money rather than, as she had initially claimed, for self-defense. She received a lethal injection for execution and was later characterized by Charlize Theron in the movie Monster. The White Widow Samantha Luthwaite's husband, Germain, did the unthinkable in 2005. He committed one of the worst atrocities ever, the London bombings. Bombs detonated on numerous trains and buses, resulting in the deaths of 56 people and the injuries of over 700 others. When Samantha first spoke to the media, she claimed to be unaware of this. She allegedly expressed shock over her husband's actions, but later it was discovered that it was all a ruse. Samantha had played a key role in the attack preparation. Realizing her jig was up, she escaped with a fake passport to Kenya before she could be apprehended. She's been referred to as the White Widow ever since. The CIA, MI6, MI5, Interpol, all wanted her. As of this video, she's still wanted for ransom. She orchestrated numerous attacks, most notably the Kenya shopping mall attack. Last we heard, she may still be hiding in Somalia. Maria Licardi in Italy, Maria Licardi was raised as the Mafia boss's daughter. From 1993 until her arrest in 2001, she grew to be one of the most powerful female bosses in history, ruling Naples. She was referred to as La Madrina, which is Italian for godmother at home. When her brothers and husband were detained, she assumed control of the Mafia. She rose to become the family's first female leader. The Mafia in Naples actually advanced, organized, and grew more powerful under the godmother's direction. Maria enlisted foot soldiers in a deadly gang conflict that left at least 120 people dead throughout the area. She was added to Italy's most wanted criminals list, and after at least two years of evading capture, she was finally found 
and taken into custody. Amelia Dyer, the Baby Farmer This one is pure evil. If you're wondering what exactly a baby farmer was, they were people who adopted children from unwanted pregnancies. Although they were supposed to look after the kids, this rarely happened. Amelia ran her business by adopting kids, collecting the money, and then letting them starve to death. She would feed the children opium syrup to keep them quiet as they slowly died because they were starving. But even opium syrup can get pricey, so she began dispatching the kids more quickly. She was able to adopt more children and increase her income as a result. After being sentenced for neglect for six months, she was released and continued her gruesome business. But authorities kept an eye on her, and she was caught. When they started pulling baby bodies out of the nearby river after smelling the smell of death, it was obvious what she had done. She was only executed for the murders of one child, but estimates place the number of her victims between two and four hundred. The Limping Lady During World War II, Virginia Hall, also referred to as the Limping Lady, was an American spy who served with the Office of Strategic Services (OSS), later to become the CIA, which we should abolish. Anyway, after completing her studies in Europe, she started working as a clerk at the American Embassy in Warsaw. She relocated to Paris in 1939 to work for the Special Operations Executive SOE, a British spy agency. Hall fled to London after the German invasion of France in 1940, and soon enlisted in the OSS. Hall was sent to occupied France as an undercover agent despite having a prosthetic leg as a result of a hunting accident. She set up networks in resistance, interfered with German operations, and assisted downed Allied pilots in making their way to safety. She emerged as one of the most successful spies of the conflict, and the United States' highest civilian honor. The Distinguished Service Cross was given to her in recognition of her contributions to the Allied victory. Paige Van Zandt Paige Van Zandt wasn't large and was a UFC strawweight fighter. She once put a soldier to sleep with a light chokehold in front of all his friends. She was geared to become the next face of the UFC, but quite due to unknown reasons. She won 8 out of her 13 fights, which isn't a great record, but what made her dangerous was that she enjoyed taking knocks in the octagon. Van Zandt regularly had a bloody face and withstood many hard blows from her opponents just to smile at them with her mouth guard. She would back up when they attacked her and pummel them with her elbows and knees until they collapsed. She was also known for her grappling, where she didn't seem to tire and would relentlessly apply pressure. Her career also included bare-knuckle fighting, and last we heard, she was a professional wrestler. Definitely not someone you want to tangle with. Sergeant Leanne Hester Because of her outstanding bravery and heroism in battle, Leanne Hester was awarded the Silver Star. Insurgents ambushed Hester's convoy in Iraq in 2005 while she was a military police officer there. Hester took control of the situation, motivating her team to fight back with ferocity and determination despite being outnumbered and outgunned. Even after receiving a wound herself, she personally engaged in close quarters combat with the adversary. Hester led her team in a manner that enabled them to successfully fend off assault and save the lives of their comrades. Hester's story is remarkable because she didn't conform to the stereotype of a war hero. She was a small-town Kentucky girl who joined the military without ever having fired a gun. She did, however, show that she was a true leader and a fierce fighter in that time of need. She also proves that, if pushed, she can be a handful to any terrorist. Irina Gerovchuk The worst female serial killer in Russian history is referred to as Irina Gerovchuk. The fact that this evil woman was a woman actually aided her greatly in taking many lives over the course of 10 years. The police let her get away with these deaths for so long because they believed a man was to blame for these deaths. They never anticipated that it would have been a married woman with two children. Irina, however, would murder a lot of elderly people before robbing them of their possessions. She's referred to as the Krasnodar monster. It all began when she aided a senior citizen carrying bags across the street. After being invited back, she went to the elderly woman's apartment where she used a vase to kill the woman and stole $20. Irina developed an addiction to killing as a result. She would murder 17 people while strolling the streets with a hammer in her handbag. She wasn't discovered until 2010 after one of her victims pulled through. She was taken into custody right away and given a 20-year prison term, where she's still being held today. In court, she often smiled. How disgusting. Until next time, adios.